Who's got the plate today? I don't know if I've got a plate. Here's somebody. Um, Commissioner Paul has a better one. Well. Okay. Commissioner Paul, you want to do the pledge? Sure. Okay. It's all you. I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular commission meeting for Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Susan Payne. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dusty Wright. Here. Commissioner Sharon McDonald. Here. Commissioner Josh Reardon. Here. Commissioner Stephen Burnett uh, might be joining us later. Commissioner Carl Melton. Here. Commissioner Nick Paul. Here. City Manager Brian Caesar. Here. City Attorney Ashley Smith. Here. The clerk is present. Madam Mayor, we have quorum. Thank you, Rachel. We're going to start off with our invocation given by Pastor Timothy Green of Cottonwood Christian Fellowship, and then our pledge uh, led by Commissioner Paul. You can. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and open this meeting in prayer. Uh, we believe in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that you hear and you answer prayer. We believe, Lord, as your word states, that you work and you govern in the affairs of men. And, Lord, we ask you to do that. We ask you to do that for our nation. We ask you to do that for our state. We ask you to do that for this city. Lord, I pray for wisdom and blessings upon Mayor Payne and the other council people that are here. Lord, govern in this city. Just pray your blessings upon them. God, I pray a hedge of protection round about uh, these new officers that are being sworn in uh, tonight and the others on the force and our first responders. God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, your will be done in each of our lives and we live our lives to bring glory and honor to your name. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please Thank join you. us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice Thank you. See you Sunday. <laughs> and now you know. Okay. Um, we are going to start with the, the um, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Reardon. Do I have a second? A second. A second from Commissioner Paul. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 6-0. And we are going to move on to our first presentation. Very excited about that. Welcome, everybody. Um, swearing in of newly hired Alamogordo Police Department police officers, animal control officer, and the first ever Alamogordo Police Department police service aide. And Deputy Chief Cunahero, who is not Chief Denton, will... <laughs> Give us some information on that. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners. You have City too much hair, that's what it is. No, too much hair. <laughs> just kidding. Go City ahead. Manager. Um, obviously, thank you for the time today. I'd like to introduce our newest team members to you guys. Um, we've got five new uncertified police officers. We've got uh, one animal control officer. And we have our newly, our, our very first police service aide position. So um, if y'all would come up and I'll, I'll kind of introduce you. Uh, Pearson Villa, he's, he's the new police service aide. You want to do it one at a time, Judge, or you want to do it all? Uh, one time, is different. Thank you, sir. Oh, and we have Judge Overstreet. Welcome, sir. Happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me? Yes, sir. All right, repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New Mexico. The law, the ordinances of the city of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the city of Alamogordo. And I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And according to the law. And according to the law. Discharge the duties of an Alamogordo police service aide. Discharge the duties of an Alamogordo police service aide. To the best of my abilities, help me God. To the best of my abilities, so help me God. Congratulations.
Commissioners, the next person I'll introduce is Robert McIntyre. He comes from us. He comes to us from Texas, and he's our new animal control officer. Texas. Hey, Raise your hand for me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the law. And I will faithfully and impartially according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Animal Control Division. Animal Control Division. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome over. The first uncertified police officer, Gavin Johnson. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and according to the law. That I will faithfully, impartially, and according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Matthew Mungania. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the law. And I will faithfully and impartially according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> Wyatt Timothy Skelton. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully and impartially and according to the law. That I will faithfully and impartially and according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Estrella Brown. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws, laws of the, the State, State of New, New Mexico. Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinance. Ordinances. Ordinance. I'm Mexican, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And according to the law. And according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> and Daniel Handy. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The Constitution and the laws of the State of New Mexico. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. The ordinances of the City of Alamogordo. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and according to the law. That I will faithfully, impartially, and according to the law. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. Discharge the duties of the Alamogordo Police Department. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. And just to update Commission, um, we've got five uncertified, we've got a total of six certif uncertified officers we're hoping to get to the Academy in January. So the Academy is 16 weeks long, and so we hope if everything works out, we have them uh, back on the streets in the May-June time frame working with us. That's exciting. It is. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was way cool. <laughs> I'm very today, excited about and, this. And earlier today, I attended a graduation. We had Officer Zek and Officer Zakazi. I saw that. They both graduated, so we'll get them on the streets in a couple weeks. 
Okay, do you guys understand that? Seven new officers. Seven. <laughs> Seven new officers. Welcome to Alamogordo. Welcome to the Alamogordo Police Department. This mayor is very excited that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah, we have to move on now, don't we? Okay, let's move on. Um, we will move on to item two. We have a presentation on tethered dogs inside yards, and we have um, Mr. John Handcock. If you'll just come up to the microphone and state your name for the record. and Forrest Hancock. Okay. It says John. It does. Is it really Forrest? Yes, it is. Did they get you mixed up with a signature? <laughs> it does say John, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not That's awesome. Famous. Well, I apologize for that, but welcome. <laughs> Thank you, and you will have 10 minutes. Thank you. I'm not a public speaker, so bear with me. I'm just going to read this. Okay. My purpose for being here today is to bring awareness of many creatures who have, have been forgotten, souls right here in our city. Maybe it is almost understandable that the city ordinance are not complied with, considering that Walkertown is off of the beaten path if, if you're not living there. I'm referring to the Walker Street and the streets running perpendicularly off of Walker Street. There's a couple of Ma and Pa shops out there, but mostly is residential. I, w I would not know of this situation if I did not live there myself. I cannot drive anywhere I need to go without traveling down Lindbergh Avenue, where I live, to Walker Street. On my street alone, there are three residences with continuous chain link fences around the properties with dogs tied all the time to a stake, trailer hitch, or porch steps. This looks to me like the most severe punishment for an animal who has done nothing wrong. This is nothing short of torture for man's best friend. Dogs are known for their intelligence, loyalty, and lovable nature. They think, they remember, and they dream. They are more like us than some owners can recognize or appreciate. <laughs> Consider this beautiful creature whose nature is to protect his boundary and his master's life with his very own. Now take that creature, put a rope or a chain around his neck, and isolate him out in the yard to an immovable object. His only option is to walk around the end of his rope to an endless circle. Day after day, his existence is that ditch. When it's cold or wet, so is he. All he knows is that he is separated from everything that might be considered a life worth living. He is trapped, vulnerable, and lonely forever. I live with four dogs and notice them when they sleep. Their feet move and they make little sounds as they dream and their daily, as, as they relive what happens on a daily basis. Their lives get relived during a dream, as just as we do. I can only imagine what a, train, a chained dog dreams about. Maybe to be allowed to run and play or to talk to the other dogs in the neighborhood or bark at a cat. I'll bet they dream of being loved and approved of. Most likely, though, they dream of someone like you who would rescue them from the rope if only you knew. Well, here we are. So let's talk about solutions. Why is this happening? Is the dog able to jump the fence because it is too low? Is the gate broken? What is the reason for this dog being treated this way? That is where we come in. In the fence, if the fence is too low, it can be raised. If the gate is broken, it can be fixed. The only detail is, is the only detail left is who will correct the problem and how. At any rate, the solution has to be simple. The problem involves, if, if the problem involves manual labor, I will volunteer my time and sweat to secure the boundary. I cannot believe there aren't others who wouldn't do the same if asked. It can be done. I would like to free every dog everywhere, but I know I cannot. But I live in Walkertown, and I will do what I can. There are city ordinances in place already, so let's consider what can be done legally. A police officer runs every license plate he encounters, checks the stickers, and basically looks for violations all the time. These violations cost citizens money. It is mostly about revenue if we are to be honest. If the weeds get too high, the homeowner gets two choices, to cut the weeds or get, or get fined. 
So the obvious solution to a broken city ordinance is to use the same method here. Ask the resident why he has a dog chained constantly to, in an enclosed yard. And the answer should be a good one. If not, give him the same options as any other violator. Comply or pay. I am not a huge fan of fines, but we are not talking about a victimless, victimless crime here. We're talking about crimes against man's best friend. My point here is that this blatant cruelty must be stopped. Not everyone is the sort to let dogs become family members. But can we agree that such intelligent creatures as dogs should, be, should not be treated this way? Can we at very least remove the rope and let him have shade on a hot day or a place to keep warm when needed and get necessary exercises as every human and dog needs? Would it not be possible for uh, non-violent detainees or I was, I was told uh, trustees to use their time for this person? purpose. I imagine the punitive option would be necessary at times, but I'll bet there are other options. Perhaps publicizing a particular address needing help would bring, bring volunteers. Even city employees could help, considering this is a city violation. I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure that there are other solutions I haven't thought of, but as a city, could we pull together to solve this? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is anyone interested in in uh, maybe thinking this might be a problem that needs to be solved? Can we respond or do we? I would ask Mr. McIntyre, but he left. He... Oh, yeah. Is that our new? That's our new animal control officer. Yeah. Um, this was a um, presentation, and um, it was, uh, it's not an um, action item, so we really can't comment, it on, comment, it on, comment on it right now. Um, but I'm sure if the commissioners have any questions, they will reach out to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna move on to uh, public comment. I don't have anybody signed up. Um, so with that, I'll move on to the city manager's report. This is the third meeting we've had almost back to back. So I do not have anything new to report. This is the time of year where things slow down a little bit. We are finishing up, or actually our contractor is finishing up with the scenic extension project. Benito Lake is still on track. Those projects are, are still moving forward. If I knew that all we needed to do was swear in city employees to fill the chambers, uh, I think we'll have every city employee, new city employee <laughs> now sign in. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, still actually today, uh, the directors, managers, uh, people that will be inputting our proposed budget for the next fiscal year, they were getting their marching orders from the finance, uh, she here, yes, the finance director, Evelyn Huff. <laughs> Uh, and her staff, uh, so that is, we are in the beginning stages of preparing our proposed budget for the next fiscal year. Um, I believe the next meeting or the first meeting in January, uh, finance will be coming before commission to get your all's input on how you would like to see the budget presented, if, same as last year, if you'd like to see anything additional, if you have any requested items to be um, potentially included in the in the proposed budget so that will be coming up in one of the next couple of meetings anyway okay, thank and you and that's all I have that's it that's it that's it <coughs> all righty we will move on to remarks and inquiries by the City Commission does anybody have anything uh, Commissioner Reardon um, I was talking to the city manager the other day about this, but uh, since we've got a newly elected representative that will be taking office in January um, and then a session coming up right after that, I would like to see if the city would uh, draft a letter to our new representative, uh, Senator Griggs and Senator Burton, and I think we've got a couple other representatives around here that are partially this area, about the funding for the light at the first and the bypass. <clears throat> and then also the north and south overpasses. They need to start working on that. Um, that south overpass <clears throat> has been that way since they finished it, and I'm, I think it was 20 years ago 
that uh, they pretty much finished that. And then the north overpass is starting to do the same thing. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys probably, some of us pull trailers with equipment over those and, and uh, you know, one of these days it's gonna cause an accident because mm -hmm. of the the, uh, the bump in it, so. Yeah, no, I wholeheartedly <coughs> agree with all of that. Yeah, I just think um, if we could have staff draft a letter to, uh, I guess it'd be Representative Block, uh, Senator Griggs and Senator Burt, and because we'll have, uh, I say the session coming up would be what in Jan late January, early February. <clears throat> so I don't know if this is a 30 day or 60 day session, but I guess a 30 day, 60 day. Is it a 60? So maybe they'll have enough time to think about us down here and see if they can't help us out and get some of this stuff fixed up. I agree. So I'm expecting big things from our representatives. And, so and hopefully, hopefully they'll deliver. Hopefully it's not like the fix they just did for us on the bypass out there. So. Yeah, yeah I, and I would like to see that light too. I know that's, yeah. uh, it's, I that, have to explain to people all the time that's a state issue, not a city issue, but um, that doesn't is. mean we can't, we can't argue for it or fight for it or advocate for it. So. Well, we, we had the traffic study done and, and it, it does, the state's study uh, warrants a traffic light mm -hmm. with the amount of vehicles that are going through that intersection. And, and uh, I think we've had several fatal accidents at that, at that intersection, so. Yes, I agree. Oh, sorry. Uh, if I could just ask for just a little, a little clarification on the on the letter that will be going to the uh, senators' representatives. Um, do you want this letter signed by me? Do you want this coming back to commission to be signed by the mayor? Do you want it signed by all seven of you? I don't know. I think it's going to have the same amount of pool no matter what. Or nice. probably, probably get rid and throw in the trash, honestly, but we'll see. So it's whatever you guys think. I mean, we just have the mayor, just have the mayor sign it. Okay. That way it's simple and easy. She can sign it, shoot it off to him, and let these guys get to work. Hopefully they'll uh, work, work for us. Okay. All right. No problem. Thank you. Anybody else? I have something. Yes, Commissioner. I, I just wanted to um, thank P and M. Um, I know Bruce's first name, but I don't know his last Ashburn. name. Ashburn. Ashburn. Uh -huh. uh, but um, I, I talked with a couple of the people um, that are on the P and M staff, and there was a broken uh, street light, and uh, they came out and they fixed it. And the reason why I'm saying something tonight is somebody, a resident, a constituent in that area noticed it and he wanted to say thank you for fixing the light uh, because there had been wires dangling from it uh, for some months. But uh, I wanted to make mention that they did follow through and fix it. And the other thing that I wanted to mention uh, because I was there today, uh, Corinth Baptist Church um, served over 650 dinners in their annual Thanksgiving dinner tonight. And I just wanted to acknowledge that because there were cars wrapped around a couple of blocks uh, stopping by to uh, pick up those plates. So um, it was a good thing. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, pastor Forney is the pastor at Corinth. And um, a lot of people are saying he's doing some good stuff in that neighborhood. So I want to say thank you. So your comments just <clears throat> brought up something else that I needed to say. Um, I'd also have to like to see staff since we got budget coming up, you know, next year, um, and they're working on it right now. But uh, now that the scenic extension is almost completed, I would like to see them at least start putting together a plan, or maybe some cost estimates of what it's going to run to shoot fairgrounds through and and or uh, Indian wells. Uh, you know, I, I know we're kind of out of bartering chips with the railroad, but uh, <laughs> we can kind of see, you know, maybe we could close the canal and move it over to Indian Wells or, or get fairgrounds if they can kind of get some preliminary numbers together of what that would cost us to, uh, to work on those. I know there's some developments that may be going in in some of those areas that it, maybe it'll be beneficial to, to get it uh, done or at least look at it. Anybody else? I just had one question. Maybe city manager Brian might be able to answer. I had a business owner on Indian Wells call me earlier today about the construction that's going on over there. And 
Uh, I guess they're replacing um, some type of water lines. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but she was a little upset <clears throat> at how long the process has taken. I didn't <clears throat> know. Okay. I think uh, just down below college, I believe. Yeah, uh, just yeah, just west of college. Yeah. So uh, what had happened there, there was a fire hydrant. Okay. Uh, a business came in. I believe it's a doctor's office. I'm not quite sure. I've never been inside the building myself. Uh, fire hydrant right next to the building, and the fire hydrant was leaking. Um, Indian Wells is obviously one of our heavier traveled, mm -hmm. uh, larger traffic, or heavier traffic on, on that roadway. Uh, so they did have to remove that hydrant. Obviously, we weren't going to put it back in place next to a building because that's just a problem waiting to, or a lawsuit waiting to happen for us. Um, so the line, or the, uh, sorry, the fire hydrant had to be moved down, down the road uh, a little bit. On those heavier traveled roadways, uh, we use the cement stabilized material, uh, normally referred to as slurry. Um, and we've had an issue getting material in. And actually, this is something a, a local con uh, vendor provides for us. Um, they should, I believe, the both both of the excavations have been uh, the slurry has been um, applied and it has been fully backfilled. Um, not sure. We have also had an issue getting uh, hot mix, uh, not only for the city, but I've heard that's been an issue for quite a few of the the contractors in the area. Um, I can find out in. Yeah, she's not here tonight. I can find out in the morning and send it out to send it out to commission when that will be paved. Okay. Uh, once it's paved, we'll open it. If we go ahead and fill it all the way to the top and try and open it to traffic, um, that's going to create more of an issue than right. narrowing it down to the um, um, uh, the one uh, one lane. One lane each way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you can find out, just mm -hmm. if they have an estimate so I can relay something back to her, it'd be appreciated. Yeah, I'll call in the morning and then send it out to the commission. Cool. Awesome, thanks. Anybody else? No? Okay. We will move on to the consent agenda. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to pull? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. What is that? Okay, a motion from Commissioner Paul. Do I have a second? A second. Oh. Paul. A second from Commissioner Melton. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Carl Melton. Aye. Nick Paul. Aye. Josh Roden. Aye. Sharon McDonald. Aye. Dusty Wright. Aye. Susan Payne. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. We'll move on to item 10. Consider and act upon the first publication of Ordinance 1665. Um, and it is a map amendment uh, related to zoning, and I'll let city planner Stella Rael give us some information on that. I could read it, but I think everybody can read. I said I could read it, but I think everybody can read. We're good. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor. Mayor Corkin, Commissioner, City Manager Speaker. Uh, yes, this evening, um, I bring in front of you case Z-2022-00048. It is a, um, a request for a change. Whoa. <laughs> for a change to our map amendment, or to our zoning map. Um, I want to start off first by showing you this photograph that I took of the property we're going to discuss. Uh, this is located at 1004 9th Street. Um, so we can go back to that if you need to look at it more. The reason that I want, wanted you to see this is because I'm going to talk a little bit about the parking in front of it. Um, as you can see, there is no driveways um, on this property, so their parking, the property owners actually park behind in the um, off the alley um, they've got quite a bit of property back there so it's vehicles are out of the alley you know there's no obstruction there um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the slideshow please okay so we have property owners uh, mr. And mrs. Uh, William Perez 
um, making this request this evening. So here I'm showing you the, the zoning map in that area. 1004 is now uh, C1 neighborhood business. Mr. and Mrs. Bettis bought this property to live there. Um, Mrs. Bettis also has a business um, that she's had for a few years in different locations. Um, she does uh, facials is the type of business. I'm not quite sure what the name of the business is though. So the request from Mr. and Mrs. Bettis is to change the zoning from C1 um, neighborhood business to R4 um, multiple family dwelling. Everything in yellow that you see there is R4. Okay, so here is an aerial map of the location. Oh, my little dot there is actually the rear of that property where I was talking about all the parking that they have back there. Um, so I sent out um, letters. Uh, this is a protest area and I sent out letters to the surrounding property owners within 200 feet. There was a total of 14 letters um, mailed out, uh, certified mail return receipt. As of today, I have received three letters undeliverable. I have not received any phone calls or letters of opposition for this request. Um, the application was filed and all fees were paid. Legal ad was placed in the Alamogordo Daily News. Um, so at this time, I am open for questions, but I just wanted to mention about the parking. There is um, the um, dental place at the corner, and then there's another salon, and then Mr. and Mrs. Bettis's property. There's a lot of traffic congestion in that area, and soon we'll be having, um, if you remember me bringing in front of you, the, the mobile home park mm -hmm. right across the street. So just wanted to mention that um, it gets pretty congested. But one of the reasons, or the main reason that Mr. and Mrs. Bettis came in front of me to try and change the zoning of this is Mr. Bettis uh, was doing quite a bit of construction. Um, and unfortunately, he didn't have any permits to do that, so CID stopped him. CID also informed him that CID would not issue any building permits for him to continue the work as a homeowner because it was in a business district. So they advised him, come in and see Stella and see about changing the zoning. Um, so that's what brought all this on. Okay. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Bettis felt that it was a little more affordable if they change the zoning versus trying to hire a licensed contractor to do all the work that they're, they're doing and planning to do. So I am open for any questions if anybody has any. Uh, Commissioner, where? Why are they going to go to R4? R4, and, and that was my suggestion because there is quite a bit of R4 surrounding that area, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't create spot zoning. You have all that behind there across the alley. Um, like I said, everything in that yellow is R4. Okay. They're just going to use it as a single family dwelling with the They're going to live there. Their, their plan was to purchase that and use that as their retirement home, mm -hmm. um, but still allow Mrs. Bettis to continue her home base occupation. Now, there's going to be things that he's going, they're going to have to adhere to. Besides the building permits, I mean, they've done some work that's going to need to be corrected. Um, Mr. Pettis has already cut down the fence. Uh, the fence was probably six foot tall, so he did cut down the front of it already to, to comply with our ordinances on height of fences. So, but like I said, I'm, I'm going to work with them and make sure that they follow all, all our ordinances and comply. Anybody else? I, I think I still have a little bit of concern about that. And I said, it's just the, uh, the fact that it is going to be congested. And I, I know that the city wants to be um, more business um, friendly. And I agree with that. Uh, the only thing that I'm concerned about is when the, um, the new development comes in for the small homes, is that that is going to 
take off more of the parking uh, because they're going to have to do work on that uh, area just to get it um, up to standard um, to put that in. And then the fact that you have just um, the equipment that is going to be used there. And I, like I said, I'm fine as long as there's an understanding because um, like I, I have been at the spa next door and there has been a conflict um, with the owner uh, next door. And I just wanted to make sure, like you said, you're gonna work with them so they understand that uh, there's about um, eight other, I, I think maybe anywhere from five to eight uh, employees in that uh, business next door. And I think they use the street parking also not including the customers. And right now, the, um, the customer base is parking on the north side of mm -hmm. the street also. So I just wanted to make sure that um, there was an understanding and that uh, there was not gonna be any problems going forward. I, and I totally understand your concern, Commissioner McDonald. Um, as far as 1005 9th Street, where the new development of the manufactured housing park is going to be, um, we worked very hard um, when I was working with that developer to make sure that they had ample parking within the park because of that parking issue along the street. Um, their entrance is going to be off of Hawaii, so hopefully that will take traffic away from 9th Street. There's probably going to be congestion, like you say, when they start working and using equipment and all that. Um, but hopefully it'll all work out. Um, I am gonna have a conversation with Mr. and Mrs. Bettis about the parking there along 9th Street and make them understand that that is public right away and anybody can park in front of their home. Normally, we, everybody can use, anybody can use public uh, right away for parking as long as you don't block the resident or business entrance, uh, the driveway. In this case, they don't have that. So if the salon next door, if their customers are parking right in front of their house, they have every right to. Um, so I will have that conversation with the property owners and make sure that they understand so there is not a conflict between uh, business owners. Unless the owner were to come in and get resident-only parking signs put in front of their home. Yes, but there's um, there's regulations for that, so they've got to be within so many feet of a gathering place, you know, school, church, and so of course Rachel would have to look at all that. And I don't, okay. I don't see any in that area, just off the top of my head, because I had that same thought. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have to meet those requirements. Um, I would think a business that has that much customers would be considered a gathering place uh, if it's if it's an issue. Uh, but I still uh, not quite sure why we're going to R4. I mean, just so you don't spot zone. I'm just a little concerned if they're going to be single family living there. Why don't we just go to R1? Because R, well, I have a little bit of R1, um, the next block, but R1, R1 in that area, I would, mm -hmm. I would create spot zoning. And you can see too the, um, I'm not sure what street that is, I'm sorry, but but there is an R4 that's already been approved, has been there for years. Is that the yellow in between one all, all that, the that yellow one by itself there? Yeah, in between all that C1. Okay. Now that was done before there, my time. Are there plans to make this a multifamily dwelling in the no, future? No, it's just, it's just Mr. and Mrs. Um, Pettis that live there. Okay. Um, it's just, they're trying, they're trying to get away from C1 because my conversation with the property owners, he said he cannot afford to hire a contractor you're, to you're do the work. You're allowed to build residential, per our ordinances, I think you're allowed to build a residential structure on commercial lot. Yes, so. but uh, CID considers it its, it's a neighborhood business, so they won't issue him any permits. He's already had that conversation with um, Chief um, Maesa. So that's the thing is we're out, we don't have any control over that.
I think in order to issue a resident parking only sign, wouldn't they have to come before the commission? They yes, they do. They yeah. Yes. Like I said, they have to meet Just that saying, requirement. Problem solved. <laughs> if it's an issue, then, you know, they could actually do that if they're residing there. Yeah. Well, and in, in, um, Rachel is, is the one that reviews all those, and um, I don't want to speak out of place, and I, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but they have ample parking in the rear. That's where all their designated parking is. Mm -hmm. That's where it has been for years. So I'm sure that would be something that well, would be taken into consideration. Well, and those buildings are so close together. Issuing a resident parking <clears throat> only sign for something like that is almost... I mean, I know it can be done, but I'm familiar with that salon next door also, and it's just, they're right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, yeah. you, the, and, and the salon next door, the, the, the building is small enough, you maybe could park two cars in front of it, so they have to be able to park on the, I mean, it's just not very big. So. And the dental office has the all their parking in the rear yes. also, mm -hmm. their designated parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I do have one question. So with it being R4, they sell the property down the road. Somebody else could theoretically come in and build another structure in the back. I don't know what else is there currently they to would, make it multi. They would not be able to build another structure because they would not meet the setback requirements. So that would not be approved okay. by my department. Okay. They, there's no room. There's no way that would happen. Okay. Makes sense. Anybody else? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve um, item? It's item nine. Yeah, it's item nine. You know, yeah. that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. I was looking at the agenda on our screen here, and I'm like. It skips from eight to ten. So We missed item nine somewhere. Okay. Let's make a motion to approve ordinance. It's got to be 16. that new math. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I'll just make a motion to approve Ordinance 1665 for first publication. Okay. I have a motion from Commissioner Reardon. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Commissioner Melton. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Carl Melton. Aye. Nick Paul. Aye. Josh Reardon. Aye. Sharon McDonald. Aye. Dusty Wright. Aye. Susan Payne. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. And... We're going to say that's item 9. So we're going to move on to item 10. Consider an act upon resolution 2022-48 uh, concerning release of liens. And Ashley Smith. Yes. Um, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. Um, I'm asking you to consider an act upon resolution 48 authorizing the release of liens that are outside the four-year statute of limitations there are 24 <coughs> liens um, that are past the four-year deadline with a total of thirty-four thousand six hundred sixteen dollars and one cent and I'm open for questions is the twenty-four thousand item is that for demolition of blight so uh, that's uh, the property that's on Rockwood actually mm -hmm. that's a small portion of the of the demolition of that property I believe that was only the asbestos abatement portion but we have foreclosed uh, or that's the remainder of the lien on that property the city has foreclosed on that property and that property has been sold already on the courthouse steps um, and the uh, person that's listed, Ms. Sailor, I believe, is the name. Um, she uh, many years ago passed away, so okay. th th this is not uh, something the city would ever be able to collect on. Yeah, that's the infamous Rockwood House. That's the yes, that is the Rockwood House, <laughs> and it needed to go. Yes, badly. Yeah, she's passed away. There's nothing. Would like to add. Her. So this, you you will see, another small batch uh, come before you at one of the future commission meetings um, to release to release liens. But in the legal department, Ashley, her staff, uh, there are quite a number of these 
uh, outstanding liens that are going to be filed in court um, and we are moving forward with collecting uh, those debts. They're starting obviously with the oldest ones. These are just outside the <clears throat> outside the time frame. Uh, there are going to be a few others that we will not meet the deadline on, but going forward it's our intention to well obviously start with the oldest and co either collect on those outstanding liens or foreclose on the properties those liens are against. Does anybody else have any questions? Got one quick one. On these liens here, do we know, like the ones for water, uh, are they water bills that were accrued or that were that were uh, from a renter? That this this goes with the property rather than with the renter. Because I I have a little bit of an issue. I had a conversation with Brian about this. I think this morning, if it's a renter that stiffed a landlord with a water bill, I really don't want to see us go after him or her and foreclose on their property over a water bill that they did not sign up for. So the, <clears throat> excuse me, so these obviously are the ones that we're asking to be forgiven. Yes. Yeah. Uh, going forward, uh, that is a discussion prior to, to the discussion we had er, uh, earlier today. I think it was today. Okay. Was yesterday um, or today. Yesterday or today. Yeah. Um, We've had that conversation with with the legal department. Uh, they are closely working with with water billing, so that if in the past there was a property that was uh, like you were describing, that was a rental property, and there was a period of time before the ordinance was changed multiple times mm -hmm. where that could have happened um, but that is so far in the past that those liens should have been forgiven. Okay. Um, notices have gone out uh, prior to actually Ashley starting with the city to the to these um, to the people that have the outstanding liens uh, to to try and collect and we did collect quite a, quite a quite a number of the of the past due amounts. Um, but they will be verifying with water with water billing uh, what we have in our system to try and prevent that from happening. Okay. The property owner will get a notice from from the uh, I believe uh, you might want to explain that portion because that's getting into the legal side. <laughs> so after we start the foreclosure process, which we file a complaint in district court. Once we file that complaint, we then, the court issues a summons. We send to the property owners, we send them the complaint that we filed and the summons. And all that gets done within five days after filing the complaint. So they will have notice and then they have um, six weeks to respond, to either come to the legal department, you know, work something out to where they're going to pay us or if no one responds then we go before the district court um, and they will you know make their ruling one way or another whether they grant us the foreclosure or not I don't know how the rest of y'all feel on that but I'd almost like to see that list before we file those foreclosures just to see and then if you guys could have a description I know it's, it sounds a little bit like micromanaging but you know, and, and see uh, if it's weeds or water or what it is. And you know what I mean? I, I really don't want to take somebody's home over $700 or 600 or 300 whatever it may be. The majority of these are, what, 200 two dollars to $400. Well, and that's why the notices have gone out, and this is after they've been billed multiple times, have been sent to collections, um, have received quite a bit of correspondence from the city. Mm -hmm. um, this would be their last uh, correspondence or do they we, go before or they go before the judge. Do we have certified letters with return receipt to prove that they actually received that information? Yes, we do send um, okay. several notices that are certified mail. When, like I said, when my department, so the way it goes is 
we get told that, hey, we have these liens or that we need to put liens on these properties, mm -hmm. right? Um, we then actually sit on these liens. Right now, we've been sitting for over four years, which is why my department, we're trying to yeah. go through the backlog right now. But um, when it's close to that four year or, you know, in the future, we're hoping for about a year. Um, when I do the process of foreclosure, that also has to be certified mail. So that's another step that will be certified mail. I know finance does all their, a lot of their stuff for certified mail. So we do have multiple certified mail letters. And I'm sorry, do we, we still have a remedy for uh, the landlords, right? They can sign, do we still have the paper they can sign and <laughs> yes, <laughs> we still have the waiver. Yes. Yeah. So they they can sign a waiver. I know. I know. But they can sign a waiver. I like to say, when you're in that business and you have multiple rentals, I uh, get it. It makes your you know. It, it, I have a rental. Nick over there has a rental. Okay. I have a waiver. My water bill for that customer to move in there is going to be considerably higher than his who doesn't have a waiver. So it gives. Well, it's fifty dollars more. I don't remember what it was. It used to be it's more than that. <laughs> I do this still, all day long. It's it, 170 The deposit is $170 mm -hmm. uh, to sign up. I believe it's 170 and I think it's 210 or it used to be 210 if they signed the waiver or 220 or something like that. There's really not a huge difference. Um, still $50 is $50. I, I understand mm -hmm. that, but I think in order for the landlord to protect themselves, they can't be mm -hmm. concerned about the... You know, especially now, you can't even find a rental now. I don't think people are going to complain about paying an extra fifty dollars. So, I'm just. I say, I just, I don't want the city government taking people's homes over four to five hundred dollars. I, well, I and those those people that whether it's for water, it's for weeds, it's for whatever the lien was placed for, mm -hmm. they have the final opportunity yeah. to come into the city and. Either make their case. Are you raising your? Go ahead. I'm just Sorry. saying. You know, Additionally, yeah. I should say, even after we do the foreclosure, if the judge grants us, you know, that property, the property owner actually still has, um, according to the state, at least three months to actually get the property back, mm -hmm. um, even after we sell it. Actually, okay. technically, so there's a lot of opportunity if someone wishes. Yeah, like I say, I know these we got to write off or whatever because it's over the four years. But uh, I just think on those future ones that you're bringing, uh, you know, you got to look at it from our standpoint as well. I mean, I know we got to do what's right for the city, but we also got to do what's right for those people that vote us into office and not take their homes over three hundred bucks. You know, so. But I, I get it. You know what I mean. I do. <laughs> I own multiple properties we're, too. I understand, we're the, but we're the government, we're not. I know, the Gestapo, you but know. what is the, uh, and, uh, and this is a serious question, like what is the solution? Is the solution for us to write off, okay, so this would only be $10,000 if it wasn't for this big one, but mm -hmm. which I would like to point out is considerably less than what we've seen in the past, so yeah. kudos to you guys for that. Um, but what is the solution? I don't. I don't know. We can't keep doing, you know, ten thousand dollars here and ten thousand dollars there because people Every, have received letters, they've received notices, this has gone on for close to four years and they've done nothing. And the reason they do nothing is because they don't think we're serious. So what is the solution? I don't know. But not I'm not gonna be in favor of voting to take somebody's home over three hundred dollars. I'm not either, but I don't think it'll come to that. Never know, but I, I don't think it'll come to that. I think I, I will tell you that if I was a homeowner in this situation and I went, wait a minute, you're going to foreclose on my house over two hundred dollars, I'd just pay the two hundred dollars. Well, I would too, but because uh, that's the cost of doing business. So, and then the next time yeah. I'd sign the waiver and well, somebody no, will rent I mean, the house. if this is a water bill, like a, I had this conversation with him this morning, is if it's P and M or New Mexico gas, that bill goes with the person that signed on the dotted line. It doesn't go with the person that owns the property. We are the only ones that do that. The city of Alma Gordo is so. But anyway, this is a discussion for down the road when we mm -hmm. when we talk about this. So, 
Everybody else doesn't have any discussion. I'll just make a motion to approve resolution 2022-48. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Reardon. Do I have a second? I'll second. A second from Commissioner Paul. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Carl Melton. Aye. Nick Paul. Aye. Josh Reardon. Aye. Sharon McDonald. Aye. Dusty Wright. Aye. Susan Payne. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, six zero. We're going to move on to item eleven, formerly known as twelve. Consider and act upon uh, canceling the December twentieth, two thousand two regular commission meeting, and city manager. Oh, this one's mine. It's yours. <laughs> Unless you'd like me to this talk about is it. <laughs> obviously the meeting right before the the Christmas holiday um, traditionally this is a time that we don't see as many bid awards etc we put those off to the new fiscal year is very difficult to get uh, when we do have the projects going out um, to solicit those bids etc we think that this meeting uh, can be canceled. If not, we can all come come together on the 20th and do the invocation, the pledge. You can approve the minutes from the last meeting and adjourn the meeting. Anybody have any comment? I'll just approve. Yeah. Just approve item 12, <laughs> or a motion to approve item 12. Sorry. 11. Oh, item 11. Sorry, I'm reading it <laughs> off the agenda. Okay, I have a motion from Commissioner Reardon. Do I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> that was quick. I have a second and a third. No, I'm just kidding. I have a second from Commissioner Melton. Um, all those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? And we will cancel the December 20th meeting and enjoy the holidays. Okay, we will move on to the last item, item 12. Um, it's appointments to boards and committees. Um, we have an airport advisory board. Uh, we have one upcoming vacancy, and um, I'm going to assume that's to the expiring term of Mr. Jeff Rabin, and one application uh, received from Mr. Rabin, and if reappointed, this would be his eighth term. Does anybody have any objections? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and appoint him to that. Um, we also have uh, three vacancies on the airport zoning board, no applications, and three uh, current vacancies on the senior volunteer program advisory council, and we have no applications. Um, if nobody has anything else, I would just like to tell everybody, since we won't see each other, happy Thanksgiving to all of you and to our city staff. and. Um, I would just personally like to say thank you guys for all you have done. Uh, it was very cool to see all those new officers tonight. It looks like what we're doing is working. And um, so thank you guys for uh, all you do. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. And with that, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. <laughs> I have a motion from Commissioner Reardon. I have a second from Commissioner McDonald. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? And motion passes 6-0. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>